All right, I'm going to, um, I'm here in my classroom this afternoon. Uh, I'm by myself, so I've got my mask off in the day of COVID here. Um, I wanted to um, try to help you, um, if you don't know, learn how to get a, an exam view test, a primarily multiple choice, into Google Classroom. And part one will be getting you, uh, getting the test into Google Classroom, creating the assignment, and then I will show you what you get back from the students in terms of exam view and, and how to do that. Uh, part two of this video, I'm going to separate out because it's a tutorial more for the student. This tutorial is more for the teacher. So let's go in and take a look. I've got an exam view test already open. If you're not an exam view user um, and you like to use multiple choice, uh, the multiple choice creation database and things is very good with exam view. I've used it for about 14 years. I, over those years, I've created hundreds, uh, perhaps closer to a thousand, uh, but hundreds of exam view multiple choice and essay and problems that I have uh, and have stored those answers in, in test banks and have those tests stored. It is very good and very easy to use, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there are some drawbacks with it. Uh, if you're familiar with the quiz feature on uh, Google Classroom, uh, if I was a new teacher starting this, I would have to recreate the wheel, get all those tests in there. Uh, it would take some time. I have not figured out an easy way. I wish that there was a way to just import a test, uh, Google, a, an exam view multiple choice test straight into Google Classroom. It does not look to me like that that's an option anyway to import tests. Um, I like uh, their system. Uh, of grading and testing uh, as far as exam view. Uh, Google Classroom is good, uh, the quiz, but this uh, works better for me. So I, I've created a workaround to get it in there and test with it. Uh, it's not a secret. Other people know how to do it. You can find YouTube videos and things, but I'm, uh, I wanted to show this and do this video for um, my teachers here, if they want to know, or anybody else out there, I'll publish this to, uh, to YouTube. Okay, so I've got my exam view uh, test created. You'll notice there are no figures in this test. Now, one of the drawbacks with exam view online and doing it for years, I have tried, even contacted exam view repeatedly about getting uh, JPEG files that are displayed in the questions or figures and things displayed. Can't do it. Can't make it happen, haven't made it happen. Um, so my workaround for that over the years has been two, two options. One is I give the students a complete paper test, have them write on it, then have them enter the answers in exam view. I take the test up, I use the features of exam view to grade and, and uh, collect the data this way. And then I give the students back the questions, give them the correct answers so that they can go over it. The second option is I provide a figure, uh, just the figures on a sheet of paper labeled by questions so that they can see a book. There's a space for the figure that doesn't show up. They can find the question number, find the, the figure and look at the question and do it. And then it's totally online. You can take those figures back up and reuse them for different tests later or for different classrooms. So th that's a workaround with that. Haven't figured out how to do it. So if somebody does, it'd be great. Um, <clears throat> so I've done this. So I've got the test made. So you have to export this as an HTML file. So when you go to this, uh, you need to name the file something. So I'm going to cut. This is the name of the, the title, which is what I usually use. So I'm going to copy the title to my clipboard. And um, you'll notice that I've got the ID. The ID in right, it's A, and I've got Z. I usually change the IDs up uh, for different tests. You can export a study guide. You can export a test. 
If you export a test, it allows you to show the answers to the student. I've got a, a email address here. Uh, you can use your uh, school email. You can use any email address you want to to send those results to. I have created a Gmail account, uh, email, a Gmail account, especially for my test results. Now, why did I do that? Two reasons. One reason is I had a little trouble getting the emails to come through our school domain for some reason. They were either delayed or sometimes not come at all. I don't know if there's some kind of spam filter. I've looked in my spam. I've looked in my trash. I've looked in my junk. Um, they're not there. So I don't know the hold up, but they seem to come through okay in Gmail. Uh, you'll need to click on that not to put them as a conversation to uncheck that so that they will be individual emails. It makes it easier to see them. And so uh, I'll do that. Now it's going to ask me to name the file and I've already uh, copied that. I'll name it the same thing. It's going to, I, I've already created this file before. So I'm gonna recreate it and it's gonna overwrite that so you can reuse them or whatever. So what that has created is a, uh, it's created a file here, a Google Chrome file right here that it's created a Google Chrome HTML file. You can see that file over here, okay? It's, it's the test, uh, how it would be displayed to the student. You're gonna need to get this file into your uh, Google Drive. And so um, I've got some folders open here. I would just upload that file uh, to Google Drive or drag and drop. So you could upload that file, go over and find it, check on it, and so on. Uh, I won't go through the process of that, but you should know how. Uh, there's, you know, drag, like I said, drag and drop or upload. So now once you've got that file in Google, you're going to go to your uh, class <coughs> classroom that you want to load that test in. Uh, you're going to create a, uh, an assignment and you'll click on that. Uh, you would name that assignment. I'm gonna name it Unit 1 Practice uh, Test. You can put in uh, detailed instructions if you need. Uh, the instructions I put in for this particular five question quiz was take this test, make sure that you can get to the mark is done button and we'll check to see that your data came through. So I'm doing this as a as a daily grade for them uh, to do that. So to get the actual test in, you would need to go to your Google Drive. Since I just loaded that test up a few minutes ago, it's gonna show up in my recents. I'm going to insert that link here. You've got the link. Then you can set it up for your uh, different students. If you didn't wanna send it to all uh, your different classes, if you wanted to send it to multiple classes, However, you're going to do that, the point scale, your due date, um, you know, pick a due date and so on. Let's, let's go ahead and make it due tomorrow. And so we're good. A topic, if you wanted to put it in a topic, I, if I was in my real, this is a practice classroom I have set up that only has two students, which are both teachers using a student uh, accounts so we've created so we can mimic and go back and forth and see exactly what we're seeing and, and recreate uh, things and, and get the full experience as a student. Uh, so I've got that done. Okay. So we're now at a point that you would see um, the assignment in your stream. And uh, so there's the assignment. Uh, I had, this is what it would look like to the teacher, the student. It's going to look like the instructions if we had clicked on them. Now, let's take a look at the results that you get via email to either your school account. Now, let me explain to you again. I created a special email to just receive my test results that I call WMP Exam View Results Account. Why? Well, two reasons. One, again, is because I had trouble with the domain receiving those emails. It seemed like there was a problem there. Uh, they were delayed often. I, I don't know whether it's a spam filter on our, on our school domain or what. The other reason is um, I just want to keep all those in a place where they're together. I don't have 30 or 40 emails on a certain day popping into my account with those grades and have to look through those to find them. 
So I've got that set up. So that's what it looks like, okay? Uh, these are some students that have submitted. Let me go down here and find my test results for me. Uh, this is my uh, test results. This is what the, I didn't answer any of the questions when I took this test. So it, there's an X by them showing that they're incorrect. I didn't do any. Uh, it gives you a score, zero out of five and a zero percent. The date and the timestamp. The timestamp can be important uh, in case a student for some reason can submit twice, which has happened um, under some of the old uh, systems. I'm not sure about the Google Drive and using Google if they will, will be able to resubmit. I haven't tested it, but if they did, you have a timestamp that tells you which one's the first. So you could say, and I would tell them I use the first one all the time. So that's what this looks like. So this is part one. Part two is going to be more of a student oriented video, although you will need to know how to explain to your students to do it. It is not a straight forward, excuse me, step by step process. I've set a step by step process up, but it is not exactly the simplest thing, but the students can do it. Once they've done it, they'll know how to do it. It's not a big deal. Um, and so it works very well. So I hope this is helpful to you. And I would suggest that you watch uh, the second part of this video before you actually go out on your own and do it. And it shows you how to, to interface with the students.